with me this morning and open them up to 2 Samuel chapter number 21. 2 Samuel chapter number 21. Amen. We have some folks away with them. Keep them in prayer. Some folks that are out of the weather. Keep them in prayer. Good to see everybody else here. Good to see Mark and Megan here this morning and their boys. Amen. So glad for just the faithfulness of God and the faithfulness of God's people. Maybe some of you are familiar with a man named Michelangelo. And he was a great artist. He was a great sculptor. Uh, uh, his, his work goes back a lot of years. In fact, uh, about 515 years ago, he, uh, he created the statue of David. And uh, uh, if you're familiar with that. And so on the, the fifth, fifth 500 uh, anniversary of Michelangelo sculpting that statue of David, uh, they decided that they were going to clean it up. 500 years of being outside, 500 years of rain, of uh, sun, of birds, of all kinds of things. And so uh, they, they decided that they were going to take the strength and the stain by their debris, debris and they were going to clean it up. However, do, do you, I want to tell you that preachers have been trying to do that to David for, for many, many years. They preach about the psalmist and how wonderful he was in giving psalms, and he was certainly a man after God's own heart. But they fail to recognize that David failed miserably at being a husband, and he failed really miserably at being a father. And so uh, we sometimes seem to forget that. Uh, 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 we, we find that David uh, that fell not only once, but many times, and it was very figurable. But the amazing thing is that he was a man after God's own heart. And so we can appreciate uh, uh, this uh, this morning that, 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 that uh, being a man after God's own heart, God's able to clean him up. And so uh, we, we find that uh, even when we look at our nation, there's times where we fight battles. Uh, we're, we're looking at Memorial Day. We, we are coming soon upon uh, Normandy and uh, what, what happened there, uh, D-Day. And so we find that there will always be battles to be fought. And there will always be times that will fail. But thank God that He helps us in the battles of life. Do you hear me? God helps us in our battles of life. And I want to look at Scripture maybe in a little bit different way and looking at some battles David fought maybe a little bit differently this morning. Some may sound familiar, but I believe that the end uh, of my message this morning will help us grab onto something that will help us as believers and help us with fighting our battles. You're going to fight battles. The enemy is real. The enemy doesn't want you to win. The enemy doesn't want you to hold to faith. The enemy doesn't want you to make heaven your home. You will fight battles till the day that you die. And uh, on that day, uh, what a great day it is. Uh, we often say, I've said this before, but our worst day ever when a saint of God has been taken from our life, and it can feel like the worst day ever. I've been there. It can seem like it is uh, you, the wind has been taken out of your sail. It can feel as if your energy has been depleted. It can feel as if a sorrow is striking you as the songwriter wrote, as waves of billows that go over you. Amen. But our worst day is their best day ever because they're in the presence of God. And there'll never be another temptation to ever be tempted by Sister Dietrich. There will never ever be a Sister Susan a battle of Fight. Amen. Because it's all over. But when we are on this side of eternity, life will be filled with battles and challenges. And David knew all about that. The Bible says in 2 Samuel 21, verse number 19, And there was again a battle in God with the Philistines where Elihanan, uh, son of Jer or Organ, the, the Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. Let me just say, if, 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 if you are looking here in the King James, you will find there in italicized the brother of Goliath. 
because they simply want you know, to know the writer. This has been inserted by those of the King James Sister Jam so that we would know that this is not the original Goliath in which David fought as a young man, but here's a new, fresh Goliath that, that, that David is fighting. And so, not the same. Possibly it is a relative, amen, uh, uh, of the original Goliath that came against David. But I need to tell you that if there is a Goliath that comes once, you'll find that he'll come again. And uh, there is a, a Goliath that comes once in the Bible, Sister Jane, but we know that here it comes again. And Sister Timothy, possibly again. We know that there are four more giants, and I'll say that again in just a few moments, making a point uh, that David faces. Now, if you look at David's name in the Hebrew, it would be David. David, not David as we say in the English. And it means this, it means beloved. And so here is this beloved shepherd boy. Let's think about him for a few moments. The Bible says that here is this young man who's a shepherd boy at a young age. I'll try not to be too redundant with things that we know. Try to bring out some things to us this morning. The Bible says that he was a ruddy man, which means that he was a red-haired man. He was probably a handsome man. And uh, 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 his name begins to become folklore here throughout the Jewish uh, tradition because David, one day his dad sends him to his brethren who are brothers who are fighting in battle uh, with, the, the, with, 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 with their army, uh, the Israelite army, and there they are. They're fighting against the Philistines. David comes on, he's to bring food, but he's also to bring a report back to dad to know how his brothers are doing. We didn't have cell phones and text messages and FaceTime, all those wonderful things that were happening. And so uh, uh, David's father sends him to go bring back a report of how are your brothers doing? Take them some food. Kind of makes the little navigation trip look good, Brother David. Uh, he's giving them food, but he's also a spy and bringing back a report. But as he goes there, he finds that there is this big giant that comes out and he defies the armies of the living God. And he, he kind of taunts them and uh, in doing so. And no one is willing to stand up against this giant. We know that David there in his youth sometimes, how many of you appreciate youth? More vigor and more uh, uh, vitality sometimes of what there is wisdom. Amen. Uh, Sister Tina told me this morning when our girls come running in, she said, I want to bottle up that energy and sell it. Wouldn't it be neat, Brother Josh, if we could bottle up that energy and we could couple it with wisdom and, uh, man, we would just, like, conquer the world, wouldn't we? And so uh, here it is, David and his youth, kind of uh, knowing what he has already done. And uh, he believed that the same God who helped him yesterday would be the same God that would help him today. The same God uh, who delivered him from the paws of the lion, or from the mouth of the, uh, 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 from the paws of the bear, from the mouth of the, of the lion, would be the same God who would give him victory over uh, 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 Goliath. And so here he is, Brother Wally, he's bringing a little bit of past it, but not as much past as he is this just uh, vigor and vitality and, and this unction that he's going to Sister Susan fight. And so we know the story. There are thousands that watch David. There are both his fellow uh, uh, confederates that are there with him, and there are also soldiers on the enemy side that watches as he comes uh, 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 against Goliath, and Goliath falls before him, amen, falls before this young boy named David the Beloved. How amazing. What an amazing story it is. David was only a teen. It would take many more, more years before he would ever become king, Sister Jan. He would watch his friend, and what a wonderful story that is, of he and his friend Jonathan who loved each other so much and looked out for each other's well-being. What a wonderful story of friendship and love that is there, especially when Jonathan stood against his father as Saul. And so it would be after uh, his friend Jonathan dies and after uh, the first king Saul dies, who was very much against David, he becomes king, first of all, of, of Judah. And then seven years later, he will become king of, of Israel. And he'll reign for over 30 years. Don't lose me. Go with me. And here is this man that, that his father as a young boy who waited some time. And he loses his best friend. And then the king dies as well. And as the king dies, he moves into being king of 
Judah. And then seven years later, king of, of Israel. And there it is as he's king of Israel uh, for, for 33 years. His kingdom stretches as far as the Nile and the Euphrates River are from each other. Uh, there he is. And he has sons. And you know that the story of David to the sons, through the fork of them, you'll find that both Nathan and Solomon become part of a genealogy of another boy who will be born in Bethlehem, who will be amazing, and his name is Jesus. Oh, don't you like the promises and the hope and the good things God has in store for us? Don't you like the things that God has done in our past? But all I need to tell you something. We look at our past and victories. And sometimes we look at the future and good things. But we need to remember the nows can be filled with battles that are Goliaths. They are giants. Am I talking to anybody who can relate? Am I like the abnormal one with three eyes? Am I like this giant and six, six uh, fingers? Uh, you know? Uh, no, I think we're all alike. We all face battles in life. And so here it was, David in his life, but he was going to face another battle. He was going to face another good Goliath that came on the scene. Let's think here for a minute. How many of you remember when David goes down by the brook and how many stones does he pick up? Five smooth stones. Now, there are lots of things some people have said, well, that's the number of grace. And if you, faith, F-A-I-T-H, or uh, the name of Jesus, J-E-S-U-S, uh, can all be, uh, Brother David, maybe typical, maybe an illustration, maybe something that blends with these five stones. But could it be that there would be five giants that was killed in David's life? There would be Goliath. There would be another Goliath. And we see that he aligns himself and there are other giants killed as well in his life. Maybe David is speaking uh, something. God is speaking something to David there as this Goliath of Gath would be killed. It may represent some other giants that would be killed. And so here it is. A decisive battle for David. He's experienced over the, uh, 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 the first Goliath. And uh, the first Goliath came along. But we find that the second Goliath, Brother David, Brother Dennis, it doesn't come along. But there are other giants with it. We can conquer some battles. But let me tell you, battles will come back. And sometimes they come back more fierce than they've ever been before. It's almost like when, uh, when, when Jesus said, uh, when, a, when a demon is cast out, if that demon is given up, it would invite seven more of its friends. The enemy kind of beefs up and, and, and kind of builds itself up because he's fighting against your soul. He wants to win. And so the enemy will fight very hard. Do you know that so sometimes a problem, singular, singular, can leave, but problems, plural, can return. Amen. Did you ever feel that way in life before? And so uh, you may have remembered uh, back in your school days a reading of mythology where uh, 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 there it is, Hercules is fighting against, I believe it is Hydra, and cuts off uh, uh, this, this serpent who has two heads, and in place comes back uh, seven heads of, in, in place of that. And sometimes it can feel like spiritually that's the battle that we're fighting. We, we seem to be conquering, but it comes against us even in greater manifestation than what it has previously. And so, the simple truth is this, that no war is ever won. Do you know that? Did World War II end the wars? No, following World War II and half of World War I, there was World War II. It seems that sometimes it trickles down and that's how it is. And so, David is in the golden years of his life. But Terry, he's not like a whippersnapper teenager he's been when he faces the first Goliath. But Brother Wally, now he's older in the golden years. Who feels like Brother John fighting bigger giants at an older age than what would you fought when you were at a younger age? Any of you older men feel like doing that? Yeah, yeah. I know Brother, Brother Layman, he tries to put us younger guys to shame more. You know, he's out there working on that park a lot of way. But you know, uh, uh, sometimes the older guys just kind of say, I'm going to let this up to the younger fellas. That's all right, isn't it? And so here it is, David in his older years, the golden years, oddly enough, is faced with a bigger giant than he's ever faced before. Let me just say it this way. 
It's kind of like this. If any of you ever know anything about this virus that you have as a little child called the chicken pox? So you, I, I know we've eradicated that from a lot of the younger population, and I'm very grateful, uh, you know, that we can do that. Let me just throw that little addendum in there as well. But you know, the chicken pox come, and some of you may remember it, some of you may have scars from it, some of you may remember that experience, but the chicken pox, it comes, but the chicken pox only lasts a little while. Do any of you know that that same virus that gives you the chicken pox as an adult can come back and give you another disease? What's that called? Very good. Amen. So you all are medically uh, 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 just on top of things. Thank you. And so uh, when, when chicken pox comes, it's bad. It lasts a little while and then it's gone. However, shingles, they said that that virus that gives you chicken pox lays dormant on your spine, but maybe stress or, 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 or maybe uh, 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 there are fatigue or, or there are some other factors that can factor in that can bring that virus from lay on the nerve of your spine. It can bring it to life and all of a sudden, in adulthood it comes back and it doesn't come and, and go as quickly as chicken pox does. It likes to linger around. However, let me say that they do have lots of good medicine for that now. Amen. So that's pretty amazing in itself what God's done. But in general, it comes back in a stronger way. It's almost like this with David. He is fighting Goliath. He has conquered. He has won Brother Josh. Amen. But now in the older years, there is this Goliath uh, that comes back. It, it is stronger and it is fierce and it doesn't it seem like it wants to go away the same, the same way that the first Goliath came. Amen. And now David is weaker. He's not young and he's not uh, as strong and, and he doesn't have the same thing that he has as a, a young man. And so I, 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 I look at David and what, what do we do? Yes, those four remaining stones. But we find that Brother Craig, things have changed. Strategies have changed since David was a young man. The weapons of the life are not the same. Think about this. I look at my life and how much things have changed. When I was a little boy, when I was a little boy, my grandma had an outhouse. I vaguely remember that. I was probably Bella and Brindley's age before she had his inside toilet. I don't know too much about outhouses. Amen. I usually in churches that have them still, I try to make sure I take care of things before I get there. Brother, Brother Josh, I was maybe a teenager when we got our first microwave. Now we live barely by the microwave. Uh, you know, we used to think that cell phones were something that only the rich and elite have, and I would never have one. Yep, how many of you live by them now? You know, uh, you, you take pictures, you text. <laughs> we are connected with people in such a way. You know, strategies change a lot in life. And hey, I don't really feel like I'm that old yet. Uh, I still want to keep climbing the ladder. Some of you can probably tell me a lot more than what I've even said. I even look at technology and even my job, how it's changed. And so now David has fought with life. But he was a young boy. Now he's in the, the, the golden years of his life. He's closer to the sunset than he was the sunrise now. And so here it is. Technology and things have changed even for them fighting. Let's read. In, in, in verse number 12, the Bible says, And David went and, and he took the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan, his, his son, uh, from the men of Jabesh Gilead, which had stolen which, which had stolen them from the street of Beth, Beth Shan, where the Philistines had hanged them. When the Philistines had slain Saul and Gibeah, and he brought up from thence the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan his son. And they gathered the bones of them that were hanged. And the bones of Saul and Jonathan his son buried they in the country of Benjamin in Zelah, in the sepulcher of Kish his father. And they performed all that the king commanded after that God was entreated for the land. Now here it is. Now listen to me. If you're a little lost, I'm going to bring you up to speed. Here it is, Brother Craig, that he's about to fight some Goliath, Goliath. And he's going to have some other Goliaths to fight along with. There are three others. They come in four now. He's needing to fight them. He needs to conquer them. But he's not as young. He's older. And here he goes to battle. And you'll find that as he's in battle, the men say, Hey, David, you're not going back to battle with us anymore because uh, you put us at risk. You can't fight with the old tactics. You can't fight with the old things. That, 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 that sling and, and stone that you have, it doesn't work this time. Uh, his, 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 his sword is, is huge and it's big. It's bigger than a weaver's beam. You cannot fight the same way, David. Tactics have changed and you're an older man. You just can't fight the same way. So 
what does David do? The Bible says this, that he goes and he gets the, the bones of, of Jonathan and of Saul. And he takes them and he buries them. I want to tell you something, that there will be battles in your life that you will fight. Amen. They will be emotional. And yes, they will be physical. But deeper than that, they will be spiritual battles. And you cannot fight on the memories of yesterday. As good as your memories may be, or as bad as your memories may be. You cannot fight on yesterday. You have to encompass help of others and say, I cannot fight this battle on my own. I need you to fight with me, fellow uh, servant. I need you to go to war with me, a fellow Christian. I can't do it on my own. So here he is. He gets the bones of Jonathan. Think about this. There was not a friendship like any other friendship than that of David and Jonathan and the Word of God. They loved each other as they loved their own soul. Jonathan's an amazing man. He deserved to be the king. But yet he handed it over to David because he loved him as his friend. And they were in battle together on many levels. They enjoyed company. They enjoyed the laughter. They enjoyed work. They enjoyed fighting together. Together. They enjoyed the, the, the time of leisure together. They enjoyed lots of great memories. But David said, I can't live on the good of yesterday's memory. As good as I was when I was a young man fighting the life, I can't live on that. And as good as I've done great things in my life, I slayed a lion and a bear, I can't live on that. But he also said this, I'm getting the stones of Saul. So every memory, Sister Dietrich, was probably a bitter memory. David ran for his life. He was hiding. He was hiding in caves. Brother Craig, he couldn't show his face. He couldn't show his identity. Sister Timmy had to hide away because Saul did not like him. He hated him. And so every bad memory that David had in his life, uh, maybe there was some failure, maybe there was some difficulty, but Sister Jenny, he can't bring that to the battle. Amen. He has to live in today. So he goes and he gets those bones and he appropriately buries them. Let me tell you, every one of us have bad things that's happened in our life. Bad choices or wrongdoing, uh, times that we fail, we have to bury it. You can't live in the molly grubs. You can't live with the weight of that on your neck thinking that you're going to fight the battle or you're going to lose the battle because of that. Bury it. So here it is. Pleasant memories. Difficult memories. He buries the good, the bad, the ugly, the sweet, the sour. He buries it all. Listen. Reminding ourselves of what was in yesterday, good or bad. Sometimes just don't help us with that. Reminiscing won't help us. Yesterday doesn't have the answer for today. Yes, there are some things that we can learn from history. I know that. But I'm saying if you're going to ride on yesterday's experience, do your thing. We have a God of today who will help us get our battles. And we've got to engage in the God of today. Bury them. Bury them. Old enemies, they don't fear your memories. New enemies, they don't fear your memories. Bury yesterday. I believe that Jesus set the standard for us when he talked about water baptism. Because we die with Christ and we're resurrected in newness of life, we forget about the things which are behind. And so the Bible says that moreover, verse number 15, the Philistines had yet war again with Israel. And David went down. He waxed faint. So here it is. He waxed his faint in battle. He tried to fight as he did before. The glory of his young strength is not there. He waxed faint. Amen. He realizes that there are new gadgets. There's things he has to fight a different way amen yesterday's methods won't work i believe even for the church we got to be willing to be a little bit on the modern side to be able to give the gospel i'm not saying compromise the gospel i'm saying that we're willing to move yesterday's methods worked amen for yesterday but what are the methods god wants us to use for today well it ain't never been done here before well i think maybe we should try it amen thank you sister jane amen because God can walk. And then we find, verse number 17, that He begins to secure 
Abishai. Amen. Abishai, the Bible said, smote the Philistine and killed him. We find that not only does he get Abishai, but we find that he gets Sebekei, and he slays Saph. And we find that he gets Elahan, and he slays. You see, uh, there are these giants that sometimes will only be slayed when we begin to incorporate the help of others. That's where I'm at this morning. If we are going to conquer as a church, amen, we're not going to conquer it by ourselves. But we are going to have to begin to encompass and bring into us the help of others. Can you pray with me? Can you fight the battle with me? Amen. I'm glad that we can pray together, Sister Jan. Sister Jan called me on Tuesday, said, would you have the church pray for me Tuesday night? I have surgery. You, you, you said, I'm going to enlist the help of others. Amen. In my battle. And look at the outcome. Amen. Uh, we, we look at what God does for us in the middle of our life. If we are going to win the battle, sometimes we grow faint and we grow weary on our own. But we have to ask for the help of others. Listen, I want you folks to know something. None of you will ever fight a battle alone. I look back at history a little bit. You know, I'm thankful for where we are with autistic children today. Maybe 30, 40, 50 years ago, it wouldn't be the same. But Instead of one person doing it on their own, they enlisted the help of a community. Isn't it amazing how those who are handicapped and maybe wheelchair bound, how that the world has changed in the past several decades, that now there is accessibility to folks that they can go and do and see and experience because they encompassed and they enlisted the help of others. I'm not talking about the help at enlisting the help of the world. I'm talking about enlisting the help of the church. Sometimes folks come to church, they keep themselves as an island, they never let anybody in, they never let anybody know, they think that they can keep it all private. I'm not saying you need to broadcast everything about your life out there, but there are times where we need to enlist the help of others to pray with us and to go to war with us. David could not do it on his own. There was no one to help when he was a young lad. He fought against the Goliath that came and defied the Philistine, uh, the, 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 the armies of the living God. Amen. But now in his life, he's unable to do that. And he says, I'm going to use my wisdom. And even though I failed in lots of areas of my life, amen, I feel like it's like cleaning David up. He said, I'm bringing the others on. Amen. And we're going to fight the, uh, the, the giants and the Goliaths. This is what Paul told Timothy. He said, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And in the things which thou hast heard among me, of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to uh, teach others. You know what? We want to ignite the same passion for God in others and enlist them in this battle that we are fighting. This one more day. Maybe you can think of many in the faith of God. We remember them. But we have a responsibility this morning to pick up the mantle and to carry it on. But we also have a responsibility to enlist the help of others to fight the battle. 2 Samuel 21 2 says, These four were born to the giant in Gap and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Sister Rachel, I need you to help me. Brother Craig, you need to help Sister Rachel. Brother David, you need to help Brother Craig. And Sister Rachel, can you help Brother David? And it's just domino effects alone. Because we are in this battle together. The giants are big. The tactics are greater. They're coming in greater number than they've ever been before. Brother David, we talked yesterday. I don't know everything about prophecy either. But I know that Jesus is coming back. Signs of the time are everywhere. But Brother Dennis, the enemy knows too. And he is going to fight harder and stronger than ever. 
because his time is limited. We've got to find new tactics. And we've got to enlist the help of others that we may win the battle. You've got to forget about winning yesterday's battle. That's not going to help you. You've got to forget about the defeats of yesterday. That's not going to help you. Barry Saul and Jonathan's bones engage in battle and find the new tactics to fight. This morning, I don't know where you are. I don't know where you may be fighting. But I'm going to tell you that a lot changes. But God does not. He is still the God who's victorious in battle. And if you will engage in Him, He will engage in you. And you will allow others to help you. You will conquer giants like you've never conquered before. Would you come? Would you come, warrior? And would you come and ask God to help you bury the bones? Would you ask Him to help you to look to Him to be your strength? And would you ask Him to give you grace to enlist the help of other believers to war with you in battle? Let's get around this morning.